Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to the S-Type where today we're finally going to be changing the brakes all round on the car. If you saw my sort of mini series a few months back when we had the car at Matter Customs, we were doing some bits of the suspension, we looked at the underside of the car with the sills and the rust, um, we noticed that the, the brakes were very much on their way out. The pads uh, were very thin and the discs looked pretty worn and a little bit scored as well. And amazingly today, Halfords have agreed to help me out and they've sponsored this video. And not only have they sent me everything I need in terms of the actual brakes, they've sent me the discs, the pads, they've sent me a caliper rewind tool. They've also sent me all the equipment that I need to get this job done. All stuff that can be found on the Halfords website. And what's more, I can do it myself from the comfort of, well, not my own home, my very good friend Ben's home. And today we're in the garage, which is fantastic. And this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna use all Halford stuff and get these brakes changed on the Jag. So over here then, we've got padded, all padded, brake pads for the front and rear and brake discs for the front and rear. We have this uh, brake caliper rewind tool, which I have to be honest, I'm not quite sure how to use. And also have to be honest, I've never, done brakes before. I think the closest that I've been is actually with Ben in Germany on my Z4 at the Nürburgring. We had to sort of do a makeshift brake change and well I observed mostly that and sort of got to see how it was done but I've never done it myself. Anyway we've got that over here. I'm very excited about this. We have a 100 piece tool set from Halfords, the Halfords Advanced set. We have this which I can potentially attach some sockets to to help me get the wheels off. That's gonna be really helpful. Just generally anything nuts and bolts. Um, it's very important to have something like this to not wear out my little wrists. And although they're a little bit soggy from being outside my house in the past few days, uh, we've got two boxes of these three ton axle stands. So we've got four of those in total and also a three ton trolley jack, which will obviously help us raise the car up. And like I say, all of this from Halfords, which is fantastic. And these, actually very important, I've had another pack of these at home and I've actually been in gardening with them, believe it or not. I do like gardening. Uh, these are just great for kneeling on. You can actually join them together. And so if you had enough of them, you could sort of do your whole garage with this flooring, which is um, very cool. I've, yeah, I've been enjoying using these a lot. So these are gonna be good today for being on the ground, doing stuff to sort of to the brakes, to protect your knees. Happy with those. Okay, so firstly, to loosen the wheel nuts, uh, I'm gonna take one of these wrenches and I think it's 19 mil which we've got there maybe just one of these extenders as well so that we don't scratch the wheels and yeah so we'll loosen the uh, wheel nuts on the front first I think we'll do the front jack up each side axle stands and then get on to do the front brakes So with the front wheel nuts loosened, it's time to jack up the car. Not before laying down a few of the rubber mats from Halfords first though. All right, there we go, car off the ground on the front left side. We're a little bit worried about where to jack it up because obviously uh, if you have followed any of the videos in this series, you'll know that there's a bit of a rust issue with this, uh, with this car. But um, yeah, we managed to find a suitable place. So that uh, three tonne, trolley jack has done the trick and uh, now I'll take the front left wheel off before putting it on an axle stand and then we'll do the same thing over on the other side. With all the wheel nuts out it's time to remove the wheel itself. Still a task I've not quite yet mastered. Oh come on then. Get off it. We then found a suitable spot for the first axle stand, lowered the car onto it, removed the jack and now it's just a case of repeating it on the other side. Now we're gonna to start today on the front left side. So Ben turned the steering wheel to the right to give slightly better access and make the job a bit easier. It's also important to remove the cap from the brake fluid reservoir. Just because we're gonna compress the pistons later on, we want to avoid any unnecessary mess. Yes! Now here we go, so we've got a 12 mil. I'm gonna undo this bolt here at the bottom of the caliper. Then we should be able to pull the caliper up reveal the brake pads, which we can remove. And then I think we'll probably need to take the caliper off to 
access the discs. After some assistance from Ben, I managed to get the caliper out of the way and pop the brake pads out. And as you can see, there was literally nothing left on them, just metal. Wait, is that just metal? Yeah, you've actually got no material on your pads at all. Also looking at the disc here, it's clear to see that it's lit, and so I'm glad we're replacing it today. So far, it's been super useful having this as well, because we've been going through needing lots of different things, uh, some 13, some 15 mils, we need different sizes different types of wrenches. Um, so this has been super useful from Halfords um, for doing the brakes so far, We've had everything we need. And in general, finding the exact parts required for this job using Halfords was super easy. You can enter your car's registration plate into the car parts page on their website, and it'll automatically filter parts which fit your car. Then in the description section, there's a VIN number range which you can cross check against your vehicle too, just to be sure. It's very convenient to have one place that can not only supply the parts, but also all of the equipment too. Okay, so with a lot of help from Ben, we've managed to get the caliper off the front left. We've checked the pads, and you could see that they were very, very worn compared to the new ones. The new ones fit, so that's great. Just working out how to get the disc off the hub now, because normally there's a little screw on the front, but we can't see that. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of research on the old YouTube, see if we can work that one out get the disc off and then we can uh, replace that front left. But yeah, that definitely needs it. So after moving the brake pad carrier, which was another 13 mil nut, the first disc needed a bit of persuasion with this hammer to come off. Hey, finally. Once we managed this, we did a little brushing and greasing before putting the brand new and very shiny disc in place. Ben then begun to replace everything we just removed in reverse order. The only extra step here is needing to compress the pistons using the brake caliper rewind tool. This allows room for the caliper to be seated back on top of the new brake pads. With a little bit of elbow grease, this was easy enough to do, and now it was time for me to do the other side. Okay, so Ben did most of the other side and I was observing closely. And so hopefully this side, I should be able to mostly do myself. So first things first, this one using the 12 mil comes straight out like that. Yay. So there's the caliper. And then what I'm gonna do, I think is get my screwdriver in here where I can find a bit of a gap. And that's it, bring the pads out. That's coming. These ones, interestingly, actually have, although, I oh know they don't. I was gonna say they have some rubber left on them, but they're absolutely gone. Look, I mean, you can just peel it away. Yeah. So let's do the same on the other side. Here it comes. And this one, if you notice, the uh, same situation with the pad, but this disc is loose. Whereas on the other side, we had to literally use a hammer to get it off because obviously it corroded onto the, what are these called, bolts? So um, that's already looking much better. This was the same as the other side, although it took a little longer with me doing it as it was my first time. So I've got this brake caliper rewind tool, which is actually extremely useful. Line it up with the pistons there, because these are two piston calipers, so we did one, one at a time pushing them all the way in, and I think that's about it actually. And then we'll take this off. No brake fluid to come out the top, which saves us having to clean anything up there. And there we go. Now we're ready for some pads. So we're yet to fit the pads on the other side because the one on the, the back here doesn't quite, well, it won't go in, but it is the same size as the old one. So we seem to be doing something wrong. But we're going to see if we get any more luck with this one. It's supposed to go in so it's flat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have another. That one's gone straight in. 
So why can't we do the other side? What have we done wrong? I think it must just be because we took Those these brackets probably aren't We took flush. these brackets off, so we might just need to make sure they're properly in. But once that was done, we could put the wheels back on at the front, lower the car down, and then start thinking about the rear. Okay, so the front wheels are back on. You can see the discs behind looking very nice and shiny. And uh, yeah, it's the same on the other side. It's a bit hard to get around there, so I won't show you. But yeah, now we just need to uh, put it back on the jack, I guess, so that we can remove the uh, axle stands. We can lower it down, which would be cool. Then we can torque up the wheels once it's on the ground. Lovely stuff. Hey, back on the ground. You look like you've been in a chimney. Yeah. It's not the best, is it? It's more your face. I always do this whenever I'm coming to do mechanical things, which is rarely, to be fair. I always forget to wear clothes that I don't like. Like this is actually my, this is my favorite t-shirt. Mm. Now, despite the absolute state of me and ruining my favorite clothes, I don't really care because I genuinely enjoy getting my hands dirty and playing mechanic. Of course, it's invaluable having Ben here to help me, but I do feel really like I'm starting to learn more and more. Right, so rear wheel off cars off the ground uh for some reason on the fronts the first nut on the caliper was a 12 mil uh on the rear it's a 13 don't quite know why but that is what it is so let's see if we can just get this off So at this point we proceeded to optimistically take apart the rear brakes. Little did I know that it would become a little more challenging. This was more or less the same process as the fronts with slightly different socket sizes required and only one pistoned calipers, which was nice. Although this particular caliper was being very stubborn. It's not even moving. After a little more hammering action, the rear left was done and we decided to turn the car around to make it easier to work on the rear right. This rear right hand side brake disc and pad change did appear to be a little bit easier than that rear left, which was great at the end of a very long day. And Ben did most of this. And so with repeating the processes from earlier with raising the car back up off the axle stands, removing them, we brought the car back down and it had four new discs and pads on it. I was so excited. However, unfortunately, there was a little bit of a problem when I did finally drive home. Okay, so we did end up finishing those brakes quite late into the evening and, well, it was time for me to drive home and I got about five miles down the road. Well, and I was noticing something was a bit weird. It felt like the car was down on power. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And then when I stopped for the first time in that five miles at some lights, I noticed from the rear left a lot of smoke billowing from the general wheel area. And then I thought, ah, no wonder it was so difficult to try and use that piston rewind tool on that rear left caliper because I think the caliper might have been seized. So I took it back to bed, managed to get the three or four miles back. We had a little fiddle with it. We managed to get it back off, but then we couldn't get it back on with the new disc and pads. So rightly or wrongly, what we did is, well, I said humor me, let's try and put the old disc and pads onto that rear left wheel. And so we did that and then the caliper did go back on. And also, rightly or wrongly, I then did drive the car home that evening. And I managed to get back without any breakdowns. The caliper felt a little bit stuck, but it, it was much better than it had been before. Anyway, what I did the next morning was take it to a actual garage and they confirmed that it had been a little bit stuck, but they'd managed to repair it. And so, all in all, we're okay. The only thing now is I just need to get a new disc and pad for that rear left. There's no point putting on the old one that was on when the caliper was seized, because I think it's probably a little bit ruined. So basically, we're pretty much done, but the car is driving a lot better, even with that situation. The brakes aren't crunching anymore. There's actually a lot of feel in the pedal, which is something I've not really had. And yeah, it's a massive, massive improvement. I'm really glad that we did it. But let me just say a massive thank you to Halfords for sponsoring this video, sending me the parts out and all of that equipment. It genuinely is thanks to sponsors like Halfords that I'm able to keep creating this content for you guys. And also being able to keep these sorts of cars 
on the road which I so love and I think you guys appreciate too. So do go and check out the Hampers website, plug your number plate in and anything you need, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have it. They've got an extensive range of parts, tools, equipment and of course they do do a fitting service as well for lots of items. So a huge thank you to Halfords, please do go and check them out using the links below. Thank you all so much for watching, this Jag is one step better now, one step closer to perfection I guess you could say, and yeah, getting ready for the summer, although as you can see probably from the sweat dripping on my forehead, the air conditioning is now the next thing that's going to need fixing. Anyway, thanks again so much, and I'll see you all very, very soon.